IBS, or irritable bowel syndrome, is very common. One in five Canadians has been diagnosed with it. But many people still believe IBS is just a catch-all phrase with no real meaning or treatment options. But here to help us understand why that's just not the case is registered dietitian Andrea Hardy. Good morning to you. Yeah, thank you. So why don't we start with that idea? So many people just sort of think it's this sweeping diagnosis that doesn't mean much, but you're saying exactly. that's not the case. No, so IBS is a real diagnosis with real treatment options. Okay. Um, so IBS is a functional gut disorder, meaning that your regular digestion is disrupted and people experience bloating, gas, distension, abdominal pain, and changes in bowel habits that can really impact their quality of life. Yes, it sounds like when you've got these symptoms happening, that can really impact your quality of life and make life really challenging. And you're saying you don't need to live that way. Exactly. So there are a lot of solutions to help manage IBS, and of okay. course one of them is nutrition. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, let's start with some myth busting, shall we? Exactly. Okay, so what can food do to help you? Exactly. So many times people are told to eat more fiber, when in fact that can actually make symptoms worse. Yes. So we really do want to get enough fiber in. However, certain types of fibers contain something called FODMAPs. Okay. Have you heard of them? Yes, I've heard of the FODMAP yeah. diet. Yes. So FODMAPs are fermentable carbohydrates. Okay. So when we eat them, bacteria in our gut break them down and produce gas, oh. which in people with IBS can cause Ooh, discomfort. Of course, of course. So, so you want to avoid those. Exactly, okay. in the short term, because they're actually really important for gut health. They feed your bacteria in your gut. Okay. So we want to remove them for about 4 to 12 weeks and then strategically reintroduce and see what your upper tolerable levels are. Oh, okay. So this is a strategic reintroduction exactly, of these. Exactly, yeah. So when you're taking them out, what is that allowing to happen? Is that exactly. just like everything to calm down in yep. there? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So get your symptoms under control. What I say is bring you back to your new baseline. And then we kind of see which ones do you tolerate and which ones bother your symptoms the most. Okay, so what are yeah. these FODMAPs? Can we have some so, examples? So yeah. I have brought a lot of FODMAPs along today. Okay, so terrific. They, there are five categories, the first one being lactose. So this one's obvious. Right. So we want to avoid high amounts of lactose in one sitting. Okay. So yogurts and cheeses may still be okay, but large volumes of dairy can aggravate your gut. Okay, good. So avoid those. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second category is fructose. And so... Fructose, of course, you think of high sugar foods, sure. um, things like soda, um, maybe things like honey, um, but you wouldn't typically think of fruits and veg. So high fructose exists in things like asparagus, apples, pears, oh. all of which can exacerbate symptoms in people with IBS. Oh, okay. So those are something you need to take a break from as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. The third category is sugar alcohols. So sugar alcohols pull water into your bowels because they're poorly digested. Okay. Um, and they are found in things like mushrooms, cauliflower, avocado, which is, you know, a big favorite right now. Sure. It's a popular food. And so when we cut those out, people tend to experience less gut symptoms. Oh, okay, okay, wonderful. Yeah. So keep those on the sidelines, at least for a exactly, while. Exactly, okay. yeah. And then the last category is the fructans and the galacto-oligosaccharides. So it's kind of a mouthful. Okay. Sure, yeah. Um, but they tend to be found in our grain products, like our uh, cereals, our pastas, our beans and legumes, and then the big one is onion and garlic, which is really oh, hard is to everything. take out of your diet. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we want to remove these in the short term, but then strategically reintroduce to see which ones you tolerate. And okay. most of the time, people tolerate some of them, but maybe but not, not all. all of them all of the time. Okay. And so what are you looking for? You're looking for symptoms as you slowly introduce them? Exactly. Okay. So we want to see which ones trigger that bloating, gas, distension, discomfort, okay. change, changes in bowel habits. Okay. And, and so, go from there. exactly. Terrific. Now, it is IBS month, and you've got an event coming yes. up where people can learn a bit more about this. Exactly. Tell us about so that. So, on April 17th, mm -hmm. we are hosting uh, IBS Awareness Month Understanding and Managing IBS. So, Absolutely. I've partnered with the Canadian Digestive Health Foundation and IBGARD to bring Calg Calgarians together to take charge of their gut health and better understand irritable bowel syndrome. Wonderful. Because, of course, if you can understand it better, then you're going to feel better. Exactly. Right? And the stigma goes down. So, there's less, you know, criticism about it or less worry that it's all in your head, which is just not true. Which is just not true. Andrea, thank you so much. Fantastic information today.